Hi everybody, Randy at Clearwood here. We're in the shop this morning and as you can see it's winter in North America. I've got my insulated overalls, uh, got the wood stove fired up, and we're ready to go to work this morning. So anyway, just wanted to uh, bring you up to date on where this current project is at. Uh, last time we went over cutting the board loose from the rocker tabs and getting it flipped over. And so we've done that. And uh, when we were with you last time and showed you the process just prior to flipping, uh, at that time we had the rails installed uh, to about, uh, you know, from the, from the deck down. Uh, because the board's flip, it would be up in this perspective, but we had two or three rail strips on just to give the board a little rigidity. <clears throat> uh, we then flipped the board over and then complete the rail strips up and over the curve of the bottom corner of the, uh, of the rail itself. So in this perspective here, uh, the board's flipped over and it's upside down. So up is down and down is up, if that makes any sense. But uh, so we we brought our rails down um, and around the, the corner of the rail and, and onto the bottom and paired everything off flush so that we'll be able to take our, our uh, bottom strips and just lay those down over the framework and they'll, uh, uh, they'll glue to this portion of the rail that's been brought up and paired up flush in the same and is in the same plane as the uh, as the bottom of the of the frames themselves. So you know essentially at this point in time uh, got quite a few of our strips milled up uh, We've got uh, the entire inside of the board has been sealed with a thin epoxy. Um, basically, what I do is I take my uh, my my resin uh, hardener mix and I thin it out about 50/50 with uh, denatured alcohol, which makes a, a pretty good pretty good sealer. Um, you know, there are other products to do that with. There's some, some proprietary, uh, clear epoxy, uh, penetrating sealers that are, that are on the market out there. Um, but you can, basically, you can make your own with just a, a thin epoxy solution. Um, and denatured alcohol is, is probably the best, it's probably the best way to do it. It's a, not a real toxic material. It doesn't have a lot of VOCs and, um, uh, but you do have to be careful. Uh, it's fairly flammable, so if you're working in an environment that has wood heat uh, or heat heat lamps or any of those sorts of things, you want to be real careful uh, when it comes to any flammable materials. So, with this particular board, uh, this is our 17-foot unlimited class board, and with this board, we've we've done a few things to uh, Kind of enhance the structure a little bit. Um, never really built a SUP this long, so uh, four and a half flex uh, was a little bit of a concern. I reinforced the board right at the break in the deck, uh, added some strong backs in the bottom, and uh, so we'll see once we get the bottom on and put the board over just just what we have in terms of the structure. But it should be pretty. Pretty stiff. Uh, these these structures, by nature, uh, are are very stiff and uh, strong structures. So, uh, we'll we'll find out here pretty soon. Uh, it's not going to take long to get this bottom on. Um, so at this point, we have the bottom. We have the interior seal. Uh, we have our, our bottom. The strips are going to go on the bottom. Basically, I I mill these up and then I seal what will become the inside of them. So the inside is, is sealed, uh, the outside is bare. Um, you know, if you're worried about uh, edge contamination, um, when you seal the back of the strip, um, 
which I am. I, I try to make sure I good, clean, fresh wood on the edge of the strip when I do the install of these strips on the bottom. So basically I just leave my uh, leave my strips just as wide as they come when I rough mill them. Uh, then I seal the back and then uh, when everything, all the sealer is dry, then I'll rip everything to a common width, uh, which will give me nice clean edges to work with. So, so uh, basically we've got, uh, we've got most of our strips from the bottom ready to go. They're all sealed up. Uh, the inside of the board is sealed up. Um, we've got uh, blocking in place for the, the grip that we're going to use. Um, there's different ways to do that, but uh, we've got that all set up and ready to go. Uh, we've also got our blocking in for the uh, pin box, um, which you might be able to see on the aft end of the board here. Um, we've also got blocking in place for the uh, for the vents and the leash. Um, which need to be in place before you put the bottom on. Um, so essentially, boards boards ready for strips. Um, you know, just a couple of things I'll point out here when we flip the board over. Um, you, you know, the board has a certain amount of flexibility at that point, uh, but it's pretty easy to feel where. Um, the point of equilibrium is so that you can get the rocker profile back in the right form. Um, you know, the, basically one, once you have the board flipped over, then it needs to be temporarily blocked into place so that you can work on the structure without the, without this, this board in frame, without the framework of the board moving around and flexing. So one, once we, once we have that position uh, in place, kind of just with temporary blocks in a sense, then we come back in with some, uh, you can see it right here, we make some uh, wedges and, uh, you know, basically just out of rough 2 by 4s that fit the shape of the, um, of the deck. Um, just make contact, doesn't actually have to fit the shape of the deck, it just has to make contact with the deck. And then we just, what we do is just temporarily hot glue those into place. So uh, the block is glued to the assembly table, and then it's also glued to the deck of the board itself. So uh, you have to be a little bit careful when you cut all of that loose. Essentially what I do is I'll saw through these blocks once, once the board is finished with all the strips on it. I'll saw through the blocks. Um, Turn the board over, and then very carefully with a razor sharp chisel, I'll just pair the leftovers of those blocks uh, back to the surface of the strip. If you try to knock the block loose or you get in a hurry with your chisel, you can tear chunks out of the deck. So um, you know it's all fixable, but it's you know it's kind of frustrating when that happens. So you know I try to work with a pretty Pretty sharp chisel, just very carefully to pull that off. So essentially, we're uh, we're ready to go here. Um, you know, you can see I've I've added all my supplemental gluing strips to the uh, to the CNC cut frames. Um, I've got my strong backs in place, uh, which span uh, across the the break in the deck. Um, Interior sealed, blocks are in place, and we're ready to start installing strips. So that's the next thing we're going to do. I've uh, got quite a few of the strips ready to go over there. Uh, essentially, we're uh, ready ready to get this process started. Uh, well, one thing I will point out here, uh, since, since the strips are pre-sealed uh, with thin epoxy, um, I want to make sure that when I actually attach these strips to the framework that I do a kind of a light rough sand right at the position that these strips are going to attach to the framework. Just again, so that I've got really fresh glue. Um, you know, right now we're probably still in the 
time frame where we would get a chemical bond from the epoxy we use to seal to the epoxy we're going to use for adhesive. And if the strips sit around for more than a day or so, um, then the chemical bond is no longer, uh, uh, you know, ba basically you've gone past the point in time where you get a chemical bond. So then it's just a strictly a mechanical bond. So if you uh, just lightly sand with some, some rough sandpaper, I usually use maybe 60 grit in here just to give it some, some tooth and to open up some new wood. Then when I put my strip paper and glue it down, I've got nice fresh wood to uh, adhere to. So, so that's the that's the uh, story of where we are right now. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of this process, um, and I know it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard for me to move the camera, and it's kind of hard for you to see inside the board. But uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, you can go to my website at clearwoodpaddleboards.com. Uh, you can either give me a call or shoot me an email, and I will give you further information on any of these subjects that we're going over here uh, on uh, this video tutorial. So thanks for watching. Have a great week.